Indigame fans, this video is brought to you by the upcoming Colony Siege by Fini Fugo Games, a real-time strategy, survival and base defense hybrid. Self-described as a mix of Supreme Commander, Defense Grid, Dea Billions and Starcraft, this has you building towers and mazes to defend your colony against both aliens and corrupted humans and looks like my kind of game. This has more overtly tower defense looking elements, but I do love the ability to build mazes and to destroy all enemies. While not as stylized as they are billions in the art department, it does have its own charm, promising a variety of planets, moons, and space stations to battle on. There's even a persistent progression system that allows you to unlock new weapons, buildings, units, and traps, so if it does look interesting to you, Wishlist this today. If you've been following along, I think the number one early access in the game for January is pretty obvious, so let's do a reverse countdown of the top 10 best early access in the games of the month, starting with Temtem. This is a monster taming MMORPG which tries to fill a gap that Game Freak has left open that of the online multiplayer aspect where you can see other trainers in the world. This has a focus on 2v2 combat and a battle system based on stamina rather than PP or number of charges for every move which has led to some interesting variation. However, it does kind of feel like someone took a thesaurus to Pokemon with Psychic becoming Mental, Pokeballs becoming Temtem cards, and Luma instead of Shiny and so on, but it does do its own thing and is pretty neat. This has already garnered 15,000 Steam reviews as of recording, which is massive, with more story content, more Temtem, and more MMO-like features like player housing, in-game tournaments, a trading house, and more to come. But a solid first impression, and a nice alternative to Pokemon which you can play on PC. If it isn't obvious enough, I do love roguelites and deck building games, and the latest title of interest is Spellsword Cards Dungeon Top. This combines deck building elements with placing and controlling units on the grid, and does seem to share some commonalities with Magic the Gathering. Great art as well with at least one more class and two more allegiances to be added before the developers would even consider a 1.0 version. There are times when sequels can feel a little off or not quite right, but Cook Serve Delicious 3 manages to be the most refined version of this game yet. We're blocking our exit. Travel across post-apocalyptic North America in a food truck as you frantically prepare food for travelling from place to place. If you're not familiar, you assemble a variety of food from tacos, pizzas, boba, salads and more with key or button presses with the ever-present time pressure of meeting all your orders on time. However, you do get some flexibility in altering the difficulty to your liking, but the delicious looking food is sure to make you hungry. More levels and modes are to be added through the next 4-6 to six months, but a pretty full featured title at the moment. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. Listen, now, I know you've only come in to clean up the place, but I've got a bit caught up. You're gonna have to run the news tonight. Not for Broadcast is a simulation game where you control the broadcast of the nightly news. Set in the 1980s, a radical government has come to power and are imposing strict rules on the wealthy, so if you're adverse to politics and games, turn away right now. Away of the 
Gameplay-wise, this has you pushing buttons, controlling the live feed on TV, by flipping between cameras, going to commercial breaks, and even leaping out for guarantees if necessary, since the broadcast is on a little bit of a delay as compared to what is live. Very interesting mechanically, and just a glimpse into the production process. The current version has 3 out of 10 planned chapters, but a great first impression and worth a play. Deer Simulator, your average everyday deer game, joins the pantheon of weird physics games like Good Simulator, where you play as a deer with a stretchable neck that can walk upright and even ride another animal. There are objectives to accomplish, but this does feel like a sandbox title where you have the option to destroy the town if you want. Somehow this is being made by one person, which is pretty impressive, with more content in terms of continents, weapons, items and toys for the deer to be added in the next year or so. Still, super weird but I'm glad that this is a thing, since we could all always use more laughs about the sheer absurdity of the situation. And then I died. But it seems that this is just the beginning of my journey. The other pretty neat roguelite deck building RPG released last month is A Long Way Down, where you try to escape the maze with an evil mastermind after you. On top of turn based deck building combat, you're able to get multiple party members, level up, have equipment and loot, and even traverse and build up the dungeon as you go along. The last bit is perhaps not super fleshed out at the moment, but an interesting idea nonetheless. As with most early access games, a lack of content seems to be the main issue, so perhaps wait just a little on this. <laughs> I love tycoon games, whether it be theme parks, hospitals, zoos, train stations or Jurassic parks, but to be honest, these are all fairly standard by now with nothing super new or fascinating. Enter MMORPG Tycoon 2, which unsurprisingly is a sequel where the original was made as part of a contest on the Tech Source forums. This is an offline single player game that allows you to build your own MMO from the towns and safe areas to quest lines and dungeons. Love the concept and the management systems are pretty impressive as well. There are even meta game elements to do with running an MMO, such as choosing your subscription model. Fascinating take on the tycoon genre, and I'm looking forward to the updates with more content to be added. If you love stylish, monochrome action platformers, then Ashen Forest will be of interest. A self-described roguelite boss rush action RPG, this has you trying to purify the Ashen Forest by fighting all of the monsters within it. There are three characters, a warrior, a crow fused mage and a hunter, but the core gameplay looks fluid and stylish, which is essential for such games. There are some meta progression elements with stats that carry over, but of course, more bosses, items, characters and balancing changes are to be expected.
If you're in for light-hearted, fun, local multiplayer time, Toaster Ball will be worth a look. While it is fully playable, more minigames and modes will be added, with the absurdity of blocking shots with Toast being quite the gimmick. One of the nice surprises of the month was Warhammer Underworlds Online, a turn-based tactics game on a hex grid with both deck building and dice rolling elements, based off the Warhammer Underworlds tabletop game. Now the IP alone makes this kind of not indie, but the team is actually quite small and the Warhammer games tend to be hit and miss, so I'm glad that this is turning out well. Don't be completely taken in by the online moniker, since there are bots and there is kind of a single player experience, but the gorgeous art and interesting mechanics gives this a place on the list. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share and subscribe, check out the recommended playlist or the best pick for you and I will see you after the jump.